Today, we're talking inverters and why we chose the inverter that we did. So I want to talk inverters, but a little history lesson first. If you haven't heard of the War of the Currents from the late 1800s between Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla and AC versus DC, you might want to look it up in Wikipedia. Very interesting story because Thomas Edison was promoting DC current uh, for all the reasons that it had advantages. And Nikola Tesla was promoting AC current. Well, in the end, Nikola Tesla teamed up with George Westinghouse and really promoted the AC current and with Niagara Falls and the first very big power plant powering all of Buffalo or most of Buffalo, AC current became that household current that we're used to today. So we plug into the house and we have our computers and TVs and other things on AC current. But DC current didn't die. And as a result, most automobiles are using DC current. If you think about it, that's what the batteries are for. So when we get into travel trailers and RVs, guess what? We have a little of both. That's why we have an inverter. But if we're not plugged in, the only power source we have is that DC power source. And if we want to use something with a plug, we have to use the inverters. Now, there's all types of inverters. So let's talk about the inverters that we have. First, let's talk the size of the inverter. I actually thought about getting a very small, let's say 1,000 watt or less than 1,000 watt inverter that I could have running from the batteries and directly power some of the devices in my trailer. And a lot of people do this. Uh, there are very small inverters that can be used. Uh, when you start to step up to say a 2000 watt inverter, you might want a more permanent inverter that you have in your system uh, and a few more features to it. I opted for a 3000 watt inverter. And this is how I maintain and get to the inverter when I need to, which is very seldom. But this box protects it when we're traveling down the road. Now, there's not that many 30 amp systems that will use a 3000 watt inverter because it is fairly large. A lot of 50 amp people, uh, people with 50 amp systems that I've seen do opt for a 3000 watt inverter and sometimes even larger because that can supply a, a lot of power needs. As a matter of fact, if I need to, I can run my air conditioner on my 3000 watt inverter. But the biggest reason I chose that large of an inverter, I didn't want to have to worry about if I had the hot water heater going just after a shower and the wife turned on the hair dryer or I turned on the hair dryer. Uh, it actually can supply those high power demand needs when it needed to just for the short time. Uh, and that's what the larger inverter will do. So size of the inverter is something you're going to want to look at. Now, with these larger inverters, you got to remember, just turning the inverter on will draw a little bit of power. So you will have that uh, downside to the larger inverter. It is going to actually drain just uh, several watts of power just to keep the inverter up and running. You also lose a little bit of power drain when you're inverting it from DC to AC. Uh, and always keep that in mind as you're trying to calculate your power demands for the inverter. Another difference between inverters, there's a pure sine wave inverter and a modified sine wave inverter. And the pure sine wave inverter can give you that better analog type electricity that most modern devices will want. There is a little bit of extra cost to it, so make sure you read up on the differences between a pure sine wave inverter and that, those that are not a pure sine wave. I wanted to make sure I didn't have to worry about that, so the inverter we have from Victron Energy is a pure sine wave inverter. couple of other considerations. If you get a smaller inverter, uh, when you plug in, you then have to switch when you're going to use the inverted electricity versus when you're going to use the electricity from shore power. So there's usually what's called a transfer switch. Now you could manually do that 
or you can install an automated transfer switch. Well, the automated transfer switch is actually built into the Victron Multi Plus inverter that we have. So I don't have to worry about it. I can be running my refrigerator off of the battery power being inverted by the inverter, and then I simply plug in and flip the switch on shore power, and the inverter automatically will transfer and start drawing power from shore power instead of the batteries to power my AC devices, such as my refrigerator. But then there's also smart hybrid inverters, and that's what this MultiPlus has capabilities of as well. What that means is this. If I am pulling from solar power, let's say, and I'm pulling some DC power from solar, I have to pull some DC power from my battery, and I'm inverting that to power the devices, the AC devices in my trailer. Well, when I pull into a shore power, I might only have a 20 amp circuit, so I can't draw down 30 amps from the shore power. Maybe I can only draw 14 amps because I'm on a 15 amp circuit. But what the smart hybrid inverter can do is draw 14 amps from shore power, draw as much as it can from solar, and then pull in what it needs from the batteries, and all three power sources can be used at the same time. That's another big advantage from the Victron Multi Plus that I had. So look into smart hybrid inverters and find out the capabilities of those if you want to be able to do that. So ultimately, why did I buy the inverter that I did? Well, simplicity, really. I didn't want to have to worry about switching the power. I also wanted to be able to control those things and monitor it. If you look back on the uh, video that we did on monitoring and managing your system, you're going to be able to see that you can set settings on that inverter, such as the maximum number of amps to draw from shore power, so you don't blow a 15 amp circuit that you might be plugged into versus a full 30 amp circuit versus maybe a 20 amp circuit. So I can control the settings on the inverter to be able to not blow circuits from the shore power that I have. The smart hybrid inverter, also I can go in and adjust uh, the settings because it has a converter in it as well. What does that mean? That means when I'm plugged into shore power, that alternating current can be converted into DC power and actually charge my batteries. The converter is a battery charger. So the inverter actually will take the shore power alternating current, convert it into DC power, and charge the batteries. Now, the MultiPlus, the Victron MultiPlus, gives me a lot of settings to be able to change the charge profile. So if you're using AGM batteries, that will have a different charge profile versus the lithium batteries that has can be charged much quicker and have a little bit of a different charge profile. So I was able to go into the MultiPlus, change the charge settings for the converter that's part of that MultiPlus inverter. So why did I buy that Victron inverter? Well, it's all in one. It has the inverter. It has a converter or charger in it. It has the automatic transfer switch in it. And it's pure sine wave and that smart hybrid capabilities, which allow it to combine the power from multiple sources to be able to power the devices that I need. Hope you enjoyed this short little talk about inverters and why we chose the inverter that we did.